Hello? Hello? Dave! When did you get out? I heard you were throwing a bird away, courtesy of Her Majesty. Well, fucky Dave. Never thought I'd see the day you got locked away. Guess the luck went out, eh? Hey. And how's the familiar? What did he come to see, yeah? Your mum said what? Well, David, she's not wrong. You knew better than putting your old man in a headlock in this condition. You could have done manslaughter from a piss decision. Who gets pissed and does that to their daddies beyond me? Tea. And Mickey? Well, I'll see you in 15. And Dave? Stay lucky. Hello. Babe, I know I said take away and DVD, but fluky Dave's having a welcome home do at the, at the Thomas Neal, and I said I'd go. I'm only going to stay for one. Yeah, Scouts on that. Take your time, but don't waste mine. We only have one life. This one night tonight won't be the same as any other night. No night's the same as time brings change. This moment we should embrace. It will be a shame to waste this gift of an opportunity. Can we all speak truly, my fellow Rudies? Let's enjoy life gradually, for tonight we're raving, misbehaving to the day's end, and the night's for all we live for. Come on, you know the score. I stick on my Fred Perry and Stan Smith, leave my gaff half pissed. Gotta catch up to my mates, they've been honest since six. Shit. Where's my bike keys? Oh, fuck it, there's money on me, Oyster. Besides, drink driving is overrated. Tonight should be top form, I think, waiting at my bus stop. Looking at my Casio clock, gotta get a move on. Oh, this bus is taking long, I might just fight this off. Before I stride, I sight two matching bikes on old dinging down the road. The terrible twins. I wonder if they'll have a spare lift for me to punch a lift. They pull up, yo! Can I jump on or what? Sweet, get in there, just in the bus. Hold on, I just got to text my mate Dave. Where are you? Five minutes away, I text back. I'll have the one bevy with my main man and I'll borrow his bike, get back to Matt's gaff. Quick snap. But enough of that. Don don't miss a bat. Pick up the pace quick, man. Dave says it's all going off. I can't be long. Wait a minute, mate. Got any idea on you? Anyway, long story short, I get in. Made it in the nick of time. No ID, but the band let me in this time. No asshole sublime. For a few shapes and Dave's getting on some bird that looks like she's seen better days. He doesn't care as long as he gets his end away. And she looks happy enough to bring near enough anyone back to her place of fair play. Dave's a rude boy on a mission. He's got a missus, yet he's always hoping to find someone who's up for a poking. Don't mean to be crude, he's just that sort of fella. Me, I've got something better, something official. Not some superfluous, superficial, one-night conquest with a fake town Essex lass and no common sense. Been there, done that. Nah, she's got to at least be half it, at least a half wit. Anyway, each to their own, night's getting a bit dull, time to get out of this shit hole. Need to get me head down to sleep. What's the time? Quarter to three? Nah, no rest for me, time to take a swim in the liquor sea. I see stars as the room spins, hold it down kid, don't have the div, get yourself back to Nat's gaff quick. Sweet. After a night of drum and bass, I'm smashed out my face when I see this mate I ain't seen since year eight. Sam's her name? Cool, she's looking tasty than she did in year eight. This might be my lucky day, I mean, night. Anyway, it's half five and my last chance to get me end away. She says... Callum, how have you been? Ain't seen you in God knows when. And I reply... Sweet, mate. And throw up by the side of her feet. Well, I must be living a dream, cos somehow she's still keen and says... I'm flat sharing round the corner if you want to get clean. Uh, I know what she means. You see, even with vomit breath, I'm still outrageously sexy. <laughs> Getting. I head straight for the bathroom, rinse my mouth clean. And Sam comes in with this spare hoodie that fits me perfectly. We make our way to the bed sheets. She's ready to become properly acquainted. I pass out, wake up next morning naked, and I spot these trainers. Oh, fuck off. These Jordan's got at least be a size 10. Shit, I've done it again. This bird has a boyfriend. I put on my stain in Perry and Smith, still slightly intoxicated, when this lad barges in with a cup of tea. I'll be fucked if this one's on me, I'll pin it all on her. I start stuttering as a search for an explanation, told him I too feel devastated. She insinuated she was single when she chose to mingle. The geezer starts laughing, bemused, now I too feel confused. He smiles studying me, 
What are you on about, baby? What you just call me? You're being weird. He said. You spent the night here in my bed. Time stops. I freeze. I can barely speak. I manage to breathe the words you gotta be kidding me. My mind races. What am I gonna tell the lads at 40 next week? They'll smell the gay on me. I'm comfortable with my sexuality. He took advantage of me. Sam must have drugged me, slipped an MD in my Bacardi. I stand dumbfounded. Sam now asked me if I want another drink and I want to twat the cunt on his cheek. But my emotions get the better of me. I choke her. Water, please. And as he turns to leave, I hop it out the window. Craft your moment, own it and hold it. Ran up in a hopeless habitat, perpetually lacking focus. Some turn to drink and drugs, others fight to survive. Some embrace life, others can't wait to die. It's our right to do what we want with our lives. That aside, last night got a bit too fruity. We all acted a bit loopy. It wasn't me though, not the real me. I can vindicate the homosexual trait in my DNA by shagging two birds with a mate. Yeah, that'll prove I ain't gay. Shit, what have I done? It's all gone a bit wrong. I went from giving advice on birds to shagging a man with no condom. I could have AIDS, a disease only known to gays. Uh, I'm talking shit now, or at least I'm thinking it. I need to get myself straight, no pun intended. Figure out what I'm supposed to say to my bird. Where should I say I stayed yesterday? I kicked our premier in because I couldn't come in all pissed, causing a racket. No, that sounds like a naff fib. I had just stayed round Flukies, baby. Yeah. I can get Dave to spin the web with me, seeing as he too committed adultery. Yeah, it will vouch for me. Glad that's sorted. No need to feel morbid. You had sex yesterday and enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, mate. Now my thoughts are turning gay. That's it then, I'm a raving homosexual. There's nothing wrong with it. All right, yeah, you found some men. I can't make you any less of a man. Fair you're bugging out. Here, who are you speaking to? No one can help you. It's you that got you into this predicament. You are your own biggest nemesis. It's all in your head. There are no problems with you, you're fine. It's that guy with a problem. You're not gay, he just took advantage when the guard was low. He took a low blow when he doped your drink and did unspeakable things. Then why didn't you smack him? Shit, why didn't I twat him? If I was truly violated, then when I realised what he did, why didn't I react in a bloodier way? That soul thing, good old violence. In fact, that solves nothing. I did the right thing. That's why I hold your head up tight. And if it gets like that, be proud to come out. Nah, just finish your pie and mash, and although you feel shit, you can live with this. No biggie, no doubt, no diggity. Make it up with your other half like cemetery and take this minor escapade to the cemetery. Sweet? Sweet. Finish your pie, then get your head back to mine and have a kip, shave, shower, and shit. And when you wake up, you'll be fit and ready to solve things. I left my keys indoors, my plan floored at the first hurdle. No money for a locksmith from skin. Take a quick detour to my birds for a nap, a slash and a quick clean up at us. Grab the spare key under the mat. Get in and keep your head down. In fact, they like fluky to come round with a bit of green. After a little smoke, we'll be it with a bit of clarity. Dave comes en route with a zoos. I ponder on reheating the leftover Chinese on the side. I want to tell him about last night, but how can I? I can't say I spent a night with a bird I never knew was a guy. But who's going to believe that? The truth is, the truth sounds more like pork pies than the truth. Let's just keep this stunt. Fancy a brew flute? He looks at me confused. Brew or no brew? I ask him again. His smile disappears. Speak to me, friend. What's on your mind? Remember, I've got your back more than your spine. He can read my mind, this thick guy. Davo is so tuned in, he can hear everything. Listening in on my thoughts, Fluke, he could probably hear a fly talk, real talk. Everybody knows I'm a rude one. Walk in the street. Don't I've been rumbled. Can't have. I mumble out two sugars, which Dave retorts back. Sit down, speak to Uncle Dave. Look, I know what you did. Now, I just want you to know that you're worth your weight in gold, and nothing can ever change that. I know you didn't spend last night at Nat's Gaff. I just saw Nat's downtown, and she don't even know you're here now. Don't worry, she don't know nothing. I told you you kept that mind, you sick man. 
Could have at least given me the lowdown. I was sweating for you. Sit down now with my head in my hands. It's all good, he says. You weren't punching below your weight. You were just jabbing below your waist. That's natural in a lot. You see, Dave's a lovely feather unless you're his missus. It's not that he don't love her, he just thinks where his dick is. I can't live like this. Hold this in, this burden. He's my best mate, for God's sake. Dave says I'm worth my weight in gold. He rates me. I can trust him. I break down and begin to tell him all about last night with Sam and how I believe the pulled a ten turned out a pulled a man. It's not Harry Sands. I look up. Fluky, I was drugged. Are you sure? He gives it. You can't go around throwing these accusations about. People get nicked for this shit. I've seen it. Is he kidding? He's supposed to have my back and he's back in Sam the Lady Man. Of course I'm sure I'm not a diff, Dave. I thought she was a lass, but when I woke up this morning, I found out she was a lad. I'm surprised you can sit down. Dave, now's not the time for enough jokes. You should have thought about that before you opened your arsehole. That's it, I'm smacking him. I ain't taking it. I get up and clench my fist and throw a punch that licks him clean on the chin. He wobbles a bit, but Dave's not having any of it. He gets up and decks me with his best card. I hit the ground hard. I bounce back up, though. Then we go toe to toe, blow for blow. Next thing you know, Dave owes me in a chokehold. I hear a set of keys start to jingle. Who's that at the door? That sent you back to our I ain't even two. Some next man walks in. Who the fuck is this dude? Turns out Nats has been shagging some other fella behind my back all the while I've been feeling bad. Dave clocks on, something's wrong. He lets me go. You right, fella? Yeah, bro, are you? Not gonna lie, I've been better. Dave spots the elephant in the room. What are you doing here? There's some shit here last night. Nat said the yard was going to be empty, so I swing by. Why, what's it to you? I flip my lid. I can't believe this shit. I head straight for the kitchen, forget fighting, he's in for a slicing. I know when I was eating my pie, master didn't condone violence, but on this occasion, he deserves some rights fighting. You're doing it's not worth it, man. He pulls me back. What you're doing, it ain't worth it, man. The other lad tries to talk. Mate, fuck off. The lad goes to answer, son. Jog on. The fella sense of the affair could go horribly wrong. No fight's worth losing your life, he drops Natalie's keys and runs. I lay down stunned. A tear falls. Several minutes pass. I can't believe this. Max was cheating even before I did. Life was perfect till I woke up this morning. Now it's all just one big nightmare. Dave owes their blank. I mean, what can he say to that? I need answers now. I'll get up and head out. You dropped your blog, you muffin. Shut yeah, up, man. Oh, what are you doing? Mate, I'm going right hey, fucking to the floor. Have you got a spare lid? Fuck off, mate, mate. You're on tag, man. What are you doing? Fucking come on, fucking man. Fucking up, just down there. Man. Sick of the skullduggery. People making a mug of me. Wanna make a schmuck of me? It's only right here and it's ugly. Matt's just fucked me, along with Sam the Lady Man. No more plan about it, it's Mr. Action Man time now. Two wrongs don't make a right, but two wrongs do make two wrongs. And since this mule suffered the most wrong, then it's only right I take the mole high ground and stick it on her. Now the tables have turned, this bridge can be burned when I confront her in her place of work. It'll be nice to see us grow. A valuable life lesson shall be learned, cherry baby, you get back what you deserve, not mine, but karma's words. Not that I deserved any of what I suffered. Nah. It's not like I was a misogynist, a male chauvinist or anything. Well, maybe I was a bit. My views were a bit outlandish considering the times we're in. I mean, I immediately swung for Dave after a couple of arse jokes. How many gay jokes have I told? I wonder how people felt when I was the arsehole. Still no reason for karma to screw me in the arsehole. Fact is, Nats has been going around making a mug of me. That's right. It's time to put her right. Of course. I might tell her about last night. Jokes on you too, who's laughing now? Neither of us, because we've both been done. No one wins. Great eight. I'm overacting. No, of course not. Well, if I put things into perspective, then I guess I know too that I'm in the wrong. Plus, I know a lover, but I know that much. I'll come clean and hopefully she can forgive me before I need my wrath to complete me. Fair play. Two wrongs don't make a right, but two wrongs do leave a right way of going about life. What you mark it? Phone fire breaks. Don't recognise the number though. Could be Nat saying she's even work now though. Better check it out. Well, I'll be damned. Turns out it's not Nat's but Sam. No wonder why I didn't recognise the number. I don't even remember handing it to her. Open the text. She's rambling on about how it was nice to see me last night. Even if you were sick and dick it as soon as you got in. Wink face. Let's meet somewhere next time where you won't pass out straight away. Blog. 
coffee maybe, question mark, smiley face. I'm sorry about my housemate and the trick he played. Playing my head, pretending you was in his bed. <laughs> he told me you climbed out of my window, you were that spooked. I can assure you that I'm not a dude, not that I should need to, exclamation mark. Anyway, text me back so I know that you're safe. Sam, kiss. Smiley face. <laughs> what a touch. Sam's not a man and I'm clean. I ain't cheated. I can't believe this. All my stress alleviated, my dilemma deviated, liberated, no longer confound to the guilt of the night before, I realise now that I love my girl for real. Released from this ordeal, fueled with only the love I feel, not to get soft, but no longer can I be what I once was. I'm gonna go to that shop to rectify our relationship, grow as a man, and redeem myself as a man. I race as fast as my mind till I arrive outside Ocean Design, and out comes Natalie, bang on time, bang on four. She strolls over. Hello. What are you doing here? Uh, I need to see you. But I thought I'd surprise you. Uh, do you want to get some food? Uh, I need to speak to you. You've changed your tune. That's if you had the day I've had, you would too. She smiles. I smile. I smile. We walk. We walk. Don't believe I do. Then why don't you try me? My inherent lechery nearly ostracised me from my own relationship. But ironically, by pissing about, I inadvertently saved it. Great, innit? After my meal with Nats, we got back to her flat and I asked about the fella with a spare key. Look, I'm not presuming he was giving you the D, Natalie, but if he was, please feel free to tell me. She glares back at me, intensely. Uh, at this moment, I knew I fucked up. I immediately conjured up a profound feeling of rue. Callum, I can't believe you. I already told you about my cousin staying over. He was too busy pissing about with Tolu. She was right. I was preoccupied with being a geezer, smashing Tolu on FIFA high on the reefer whilst chilling with my feet up. Of course I ignored that storm in a teacup raining on mine on Tolu's knees up. There was a 20 bet on. There was no way I was coming second. I had to keep focused. I literally couldn't afford to focus in on her moaning. I'm talking about I never hear her, I need to be there for her. Moaning so much, I obviously, at the time, chose not to hear her. How could you think that about me? Now, do you see what I mean? No, what do you mean? I mean, you never fucking listen. What was all that in Nando's, the whole changed man bravado? You don't know your arms from your fucking elbow. Get a grip, you're lazy, vain, and you're a selfish dickhead. You know what? Maybe she's right. Here I am trying to reconcile with a woman that stresses me out. To be honest, I don't really need this. I don't mind buying Fred Perry looking smart in my Stan Smiths whilst not having a pot to piss in. I'm fine with being on my own or jamming with my bros. I don't need to grow up. The fact that I know that is grown up enough. But only young once, I can barely afford to fend for myself, let alone fend for someone else. I've got to deal with my own grief like I need more grief off Natalie. You're right, that's... But this ain't working out. If I'm talking real, I'm chilled and you want to make life a big deal. I love you, of course I do, but this ain't healthy for either of us, is it, love? I guess not. I look into her big brown eyes gleaming in the sunshine. Just don't mean I don't love you. I know, babe. I love you too. Funny word, innit? Love. It can mean everything and never mean much. Same word, same definition. It just differentiates depending on who says it. Matt's wanted to focus on our future together as one, but to me, all that talk seemed a bit long. She's too hard on me. Why can't she just let me be me? A man that's all image and no substance. Nothing wrong with mediocrity, no gaff, no job, and a couple lines of Charlie. No Benny King, can't make a stand by me. Truth is, she's better rid. We embrace and share a farewell bid with a kiss. I grab a couple things and leave. Then I go to the boozer to see Tolu, Fluky, and Mickey. No more women, no more effort, no more worries.